Hey, good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Same Bet. So, casinos, they've had a record-setting year. According to the Washington Post, casinos surpassed $44 billion in revenue in 2021, and that's up from $30 billion in 2020. So the casinos, they're running their operations like a business. They're in it to make a profit. And so how did they make all of this money during a pandemic? I mean, all we hear about are restricted travel, labor shortages, shows being canceled, buffets no longer open. So where did all of this revenue come from? Well, I'll tell you, it's higher table limits, tighter slot machines, increased fees, decreasing comps. You know, they've controlled their expenses and they've had a very good year. So where does that leave us? How are we supposed to have a chance at walking away a winner with conditions like this? It starts with a plan, a game plan for success. Now, our next guest has created a program that draws on the entrepreneurial spirit of gamblers. It's made up of strategies and guidelines to help set you up for success, even in conditions like this. Tony Leo, welcome back to the show. Hey, Dave. Hey, everybody. All right. So, Tony, um, you know, you've been on the show once before. appreciate you coming back on to talk to us about this wage program and, uh, and exactly what that means. But first, we want to give a little bit of housekeeping, uh, um, uh, I don't know, announcements. Now, actually, let me flip this back over here. So, Tony has graciously decided to give away a few memberships to this program. But there's a condition. You guys have to participate. So only the people here in this live show will be eligible for these giveaways. And it's going to be based on your comments and questions. I'll be bringing them in for Tony to look at and to see. And based on those, he will be giving away at least two. Maybe we can talk him into one more after that. So, uh, so guys, be sure to put those questions out there, those comments out there, and I will take a look at them and, and, and bring them in as, as we go. All right, Tony, let's go back over and talk about wage. What, what the heck is wage? Uh, wage is a program. Uh, it stands for the Winners Association of Gambling Entrepreneurs. And it uh, encompasses all four of the table games, craps, baccarat, blackjack, and roulette, online and live play. And so basically, I wanted to put a program together where people get and students get complete clarity on how to really win. I mean, I have students who buy my courses, but sometimes I never even talk to them again. And I don't know if, if they have complete clarity or not, or for whatever reason, they even bought it. But that being said, that's what made me want to form wage was the ability to take 50, 60 people under my wing and, you know, make them what I call a wage master at the end of the one year program, giving them uh, a way to play a professional game, whether it's one game or all four games. And uh, so that's why it's there. And that's what the purpose of it is. So, so it's not just craps. This is introducing, uh, I don't know, your, your core audience. It's introducing them to some of the other games. <clears throat> yeah. The, uh, the four table games, craps, baccarat, blackjack, and roulette. And uh, a lot of people don't know, but prior to craps, I was a card counter on a, on a very successful blackjack team in the late seventies, early eighties. And that's what I predominantly did when I was coming out here getting comped. It was because of Blackjack and Baccarat. I used to play the big Bach table at, uh, where was it? The MGM Grand, which is now Bally's, when they had uh, the, the old James Bond version there. But uh, so, yeah, but all four table games and the way the program is set up is you could master one game or all four. That's uh, up to you. Okay, that, I'm sorry. I'm a little bit distracted. We have a very large number of uh, of uh, people starting to comment. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and 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 bring a few of them in really fast. Right. Uh, we've got uh, let's see here. I'm sorry. We got Duracell Eight saying Dave Ramsey says it all the time. Act your wage. <laughs> yeah. Then all Vince right. Armenti uh, just mm, saying, hey, listen, everybody. Yeah. Good afternoon, Tony Leo and company. We got Brian from the Hawaiian Crap Shooters. Aloha from hey, Hawaii. Brian. Aloha. Heavy Haltem out there. Howdy from Texas. Saying howdy from Texas. Hey, Heavy. Nice to say hello to you. Yep. Another Texas boy, Texas Ron, out there says hi, Tony and Dave. Break a leg tonight. My man, my man, Ron. Yeah. Good. And 
uh, my friend Bird Dog out there with a $10 super chat. <laughs> Bird Dog, thank you very much, brother. I appreciate it so much. And uh, wondering if this bribe payout is good enough for a subscription. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Tony. So, so let's go back and, and, and talk a little, little bit more about wage. So, uh, why? Uh, why did you come up with wage? What wasn't advantage dice control enough? Uh, well, I, I think if you're going to be serious about your gambling, you should have a second game. Okay. Not three, not four if you don't want to, but at least two. And I'll tell you why. There is many times, especially you know, in the last year, let's say, because uh, I go to the tables early, but there's been times now I'll get there at 430 in the morning and, I, you know, I'll forget there's a rodeo in town or something. And I mean, the table's already screaming with people at that time and there ain't no way I, I want to go near it. So I'll go play, you know, blackjack or baccarat or whatnot. And uh, it, it gives you another income stream that you've never had if you're going to be thinking about playing professionally and they're good games depending on how you, you know, how you do it. So I think the advantage is having that second game uh, can take you a lot further in your gambling business. So do you have to separate your bankroll for the different games or basically is your bankroll portable and you can take it anywhere you need? Uh, well, actually, if you think about that, craps probably has the largest bankroll because you're making multiple bets. When you're at the Baccarat table or the blackjack table, you're making only one bet. So unless you're making all the crazy other bets, which we don't do, but it's only a one bet. So your bankroll uh, can be, you know, a little bit more predictable uh, at, at those games. And it is only one bet. So that's the advantage to that. So I, I would say the bankroll is less, especially if you're playing online. I, I mean, you could play roulette and Baccarat and blackjack and everything for 50 cents, a dollar. Mm -hmm. So with good limits. So do you, do you have a preference? Um, why would you choose blackjack over roulette, for example? Oh, okay. Good question, David. All right. Uh, I play all of them. The least I play would be roulette. And the only place I'll play roulette is online, uh, starting with a 50 cent or a dollar bet. It's too slow for me in the live casino. Mm -hmm. Unless I play the electronic scoreboards, and then the idea there would just to be the stand there where you can see two, three games at the same time, you know, cherry pick your bet and then go over and put your money down, wait for the result and grab your money and move on or, or make another bet, whatever you want to do. But the key to doing it that way is you have to have your, your chips already. You need to go uh, to the cage and buy your your dollars, your fives, your, your you know your green chips and black chips because if you sit there and buy in, they're going to give you your own color chips, your yellow ones, your brown ones, whatever, and you can't take them from table to table. So if you want to make a ten dollar bet, you just go down and put your two reds on the number or whatever you want to do. Collect, they'll pay you that way, and then you can move on. So, but if you're going to sit there for any length of time, they're going to want you to use their chips and everything. But uh, yeah. So, so for roulette, you, you could bounce from table to table? It'd be slow. By the time they, they, you put your bets down, they spin the wheel, they pay everybody. It's the slowest yep. game in town. So yep. I would not do it. And now uh, online, you have 20 seconds in between bets. I mean, that's great. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a different way to go online. But in the live casino, there's many times where I'll go to the craps table first and then either go play Baccarat or Blackjack after that so I, I we've got a question coming in that's really relevant to right here right now vince or okay. asking actually sue uh, is asking the question does slots count as a second choice of uh, a game choice not in my book <laughs> but not i don't but i don't play it i mean i don't know i ha i have a couple of friends that that they play keno professionally think about that i i think they're crazy but they show me their money <laughs> so yeah what can i say but no not for me okay so We've got the different games. We've got roulette, we've got baccarat, we've got blackjack, we've got craps. And so we've talked a little bit about roulette. Um, tell us about baccarat. Do you play baccarat actually in the casino or is that better done online as well? Online, it's fun for a dollar a hand. When I play live, I'm in the high limit room. A uh, hundred dollar a hand, fifty dollar a hand. Uh, and I'll use in baccarat because of the streaks. I mean, there's no other game that that's going to give you four, five, six, ten in a row. So 
that's the advantage is the trend is your friend. So you can, you can use a two win parlay or an up as you win. And without going deep into any bankroll, you're, you're ahead of the game. And what I like to do playing Baccarat is I like to play a mini series within a series, which means as I'm betting, depending on what kind of unit I want to look at, whether it's a quarter or hundred or whatever, I only need one win really. And this is betting as you're winning to start back at the bottom. You don't have to keep going up. I mean, if you win four or five in a row and you keep going up on a win, you're going to make some big money. So, but just like anything else, that streak's going to stop sooner or later. But Baccarat is the game of trends, in my opinion. In that, I mean, all the Asians that, that, that are with me at the table, they all bet the opposite. That's yeah. all they do is bet the opposite. They, I mean, and Baccarat is one of those games you definitely, I mean, if you follow the trend, you're only going to get, you're only going to lose once. But yeah. if you go against it, I mean, you can lose your friggin' house. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Anyway. You know, so in some of your YouTube videos, uh, you talk about there's only certain ways to bet. You can do a flat bet or a same bet, up as you win, up as you lose, and uh, I think there's a fourth. Regression. Regression, thank you. Um, is that the same for all the different table games or some of the table games? No. When I'm playing Baccarat or Roulette, let me think. I'm only using either uh, an up as you lose type of method or an up as you win. Uh, or maybe even a combo of, of both of those. Uh, the, the regression really won't work. I mean, why would you want to start, you know, in Baccarat at a thirty-dollar bet and drop it down to ten or something? So I don't, I don't see that. It, I just look at it as you're either playing up as you win or up as you lose. Okay. And, and another when I question: say up as you lose, I'm not, I'm not talking a martingale. I mean, to me, anybody that uses the term martingale, I mean, that's so it's 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 not with it anymore. You, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. An up as you lose makes sense, but not doubling just to win one unit. I, I just can't see that. And you got to know when to you got to know how many levels you can go. I mean, to be safe and uh, put your stop loss in and all that stuff that that's still that's still standard. OK. Um, you know, one of the questions that, that I had uh, kind of lined up for you is just like a business plan. You know, we talk about uh, wage being for uh, an entrepreneurial spirit. So just like a business plan, they have goals. Now, would should you have different goals for Baccarat than you do for Roulette or Craps? Should they be the same or should they be different? Uh, I mean, my goal is, is 20%. Okay, at the Craps table, my goal is 20% for you know less than an hour of play now but at the same time i'm not going to just say color up when i'm in the middle of my role i mean so it could be more than 20 percent. i mean who knows you might you might want to get out of the game but i mean you might roll another 20 times so i mean as long as you know when and how to get out of the game uh you're okay with that but I, i'm pretty pretty disciplined on the 20 percent. when i hit it i mean I, I i take one look at where i want to go and Either that or, or, you know, it just depends. But it's 20%, 30 at the max. And and because I live here, I mean, I can go back tomorrow. That's a, yeah. big, that's a big reason to do that, where if you're just visiting, it's a little harder to do. Well, are there conditions at any one of these tables that you would actually exit uh, and go to the next table or, or the next game? Say that again, Dave, what do you mean? So um, let's, say, let's say you're playing craps and... Uh, and it turns into a cold or very choppy table. Uh, and uh, do, it, it, do you have an exit condition where you're going to say, this table is not playable, uh, I'm going to move to the next one? Uh, well, that's hard for me because don't forget when I go play, I'm normally by myself or with a team member. So that really is doesn't apply to us. But But if I'm grinding and I'm going up and coming down and up and coming down and I'm not getting where I need to be, I'll color up with less than 20% and call it a day and then go to another game. Sure, I'll do that. I do that a lot. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I know I'm bouncing around on some topics here, but here's another one that I have for you. So uh, everybody has seen your YouTube videos on Advantage Dice Control. Can we expect to see any of your wage videos on YouTube? No because that's uh, exclusively for the members only uh, in wage. And that, that's one reason I did that. So, and, and, and 
you know, think about it. If you're showing, if you're if you're doing something on YouTube with roulette or baccarat, it's either bank or player. So it wouldn't be hard for somebody to figure that out anyway. So uh, that's just going to be for the wage members. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about that. Um, we know that the wage program it encompasses all the different table games, but but we don't really we haven't really talked about what it is, how people can access it, and and the big question: how much does it cost? Gotcha. Okay. All right. With wage, uh, Dave, do you have that little screen you can put up? Uh, yeah. Hang on one second. Let's do that, and then we can go over that. <clears throat> there you go. This is uh, part of the website. What's in it for you? Uh, and Dave will scroll, and you can see what's included with it. Okay. First of all, I'm putting up two videos a month, and these videos are not like the YouTube videos. They actually are the icing on the cake. Do this, for what reason, this is what you can expect. Put your money here, you know, follow, you, you get complete clarity. So you get two new videos a month. Uh, actually tomorrow morning, I'm shooting the, the Blackjack intro and uh, my Super 7 Hop system because that's what the members in Wage kind of voted for. So they're doing it, but we've already got 17 videos up, uh, yeah. which, which include Craps, Baccarat and Roulette already. And so I'm actually doing more than than two a month. I mean, it's, you know, there'll be a lot more than that, probably. But uh, then you get uh, the private Facebook page, which is my insiders group. You got everybody in there uh, saying what they did to win or, or if they lost or whatever. Or don't you, know, you might want to stay away from this online casino or whatever it is they're doing. But everybody's on the same page and they all have the same purpose as, you know, to be a professional. So, but it's a good program. I don't think there's anything out there like it. Uh, you get the, the, the private Facebook, plus not only the videos, you got the resource center too, where I have all the PDFs of all the different betting methods, uh, you know, all the motivation, different things that I use and things like that. So it's a good program. It's $137 a quarter. That's it. So it's a little over $500 for the year. After that one year, you're in it for no charge. Okay, so if you want to, if you need another year, you got it. It's automatic. And if you think about it, if you were to go to my website and look at Advantage Dice Control or Black Belt Baccarat or whatever, they're they're five hundred ninety-seven dollars. Well, and you're getting one game. With wage, you're taking your time. You're doing what you want to do, and you're getting all four games for less than what it would cost on one of mine. So. And uh, it, it's a great deal. So one of your wage members is out there. He just posted up, uh, Chad Burns. I'm a member of Wage, and I see excellent videos and resources. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, Chad and I had a nice run over at the Plaza last time he was here. Yeah. He saw me throw money down on the hot bets and couldn't believe it. They were all winning, you know. So that was kind of fun. Yeah, it. I would have to say that too. Uh, when when you see those hot bets uh, from your Super Hop Seven set uh, mm -hmm. system. Uh, start to work, start to kick in. It's a oh, yeah. beautiful thing. It really oh, yeah. is. Once the you power understand of multiple it, wins. Once you, yeah. That's right. Once you understand it, it's it. It, it just clicks with you. It's, it. You'll see it. I mean, we're actually setting the dice to throw hops. Yeah. Come on, nobody does that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, let's see. I think I had one more question. Oh yeah, here's a good one. Um, does the wage program allow for smaller bankrolls? Maybe somebody who's just getting into it or starting to build a bankroll? How, how can Absolutely. wage help? That, that's the beautiful part. If you're not playing online, I totally recommend everybody to play online. You can play 50 cent roulette, dollar baccarat, dollar blackjack, dollar craps, whatever you want to do. And I mean, I did a, I just did a 30 day challenge in wage where my goal was to play online and make $40 a day. And that $40 a day is 30 minutes or less, okay? So I did that. I started it December 14th and just ended it on the, four, you know, a few days ago. And I ended up earning uh, about $1,270, which was just a little bit more than $40 a day, playing online. And I went back and forth between Roulette and Baccarat, and, and that was it. So that extra $1,200, I mean, that's just, that's income I never had. And all you have to do to obtain that is, uh, I mean, you can have a bankroll of less than $250 to, to, mm -hmm. you, very easily doing that, okay? No matter what kind of betting method you want to implement. 
So it's a great way to play, especially if you're if you if you go play live and you're buying at the craps table is only a hundred dollars and the table minimum is fifteen dollars. Well, that's not going to last very long. But you can go online, fifty cent roulette, do an up as you win and or even an up as you lose, and you're going to make your money. I mean, the, 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 I mean, we have a very good playing strategy. And roulette, if you're playing the sing, single zero wheel, I mean, it's damn near a 50-50 game like Baccarat. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not going to show it, but um, I have my little clipboard with some of your uh, uh, information on it. And I can confirm that that's a $247 bankroll. Oh, and if, you can't, if you can't get in with a $247 bankroll, then, then you probably should be thinking about what you're doing. Or try your luck at slots and hope for hope for a good. Yeah, let me here. say this too, Dave. I've been online for ten years. Okay, I've got. If you look on my website, I've been promoting what's called casino arbitrage for over ten years. But uh, I mean, it's it's much easier and better today than it was then. I know a lot of people say, "Well, what about the credibility?" Blah blah blah. Well. If you really believe that, and, and I do believe that once in a while, that's why I would never make, play big money online. But to win 40, 50 a day is pretty easy to do with a low amount of risk. And uh, I think it's a, a good tool to have in everybody's toolbox for whatever reason, retirement or, you know, the snowstorm, you can't go nowhere, whatever. Yep. It's a great yep. way to play. Yeah, but I would also come back and say that you have to have that discipline. Um, oh yeah, you you oh, yeah. have to know you know when it's time to get out. It, yeah, if you don't, you look at it like it's a friggin' video game. You know, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, Tony, let's go back to some of the questions. Uh, and remember, everybody out there in the audience, to get one of these, uh, uh, to, to win one of these memberships, you do have to be asking some questions out there or making some comments. And I'm I have to cherry pick them. There's going to be uh, quite a few coming through here, so I'm going to cherry pick some of them, and, and we're going to start going through them. So, Tony, take your notes on who uh, who's okay. asking the questions that I'm you might ask want. A couple. I got a couple questions I'll ask too. Okay, well let's uh let let's uh hold for just a minute. Uh, Richard Weiner, blackjack and craps for him. He's a, he's a blackjack and craps kind of guy. Heavy Haltum, he's out there saying these are the same backup games I've recommended for over 20 years. Uh, the only bets I'd add for those who know the game are fans of poker and sports betting. That's actually a, a great comment. Why don't we talk a little bit about, um, uh, what about poker? Uh, we've talked about Baccarat, roulette, craps, uh, blackjack. Well, I don't play either. I don't play poker or sports, and I'll tell you why. Poker, and I was good at it, but I'm the type of individual, I'm not going to sit there for friggin' hours. Okay, so poker's not my game. Uh, I like to get in and out. I like to depend on me and uh, go from there. Sports betting, uh, you know, I did that. And, and once in a while I'll do it, but uh, it's not something that I can rely on that I feel like I'm in control of. So for that reason, you know, I just don't like it. And plus yeah. the juice. I mean, you got to pay my, you know, minus 300 and, or 400 to do something. The juice is going to kill you. I mean, you got to win every game almost. I was listening to a podcast on sports betting and the uh, person being interviewed said that he will only make a sports bet when he feels like he has an advantage. And that really meant that the, um, and I, I might get the terminology wrong, but the money line on this one site might be a different than another site. So he's always doing this analysis, trying to find out where he should make his bets. And you know, that's almost too much work for me. Um, well, you're right. I, and I did that. Like I said, I did a lot in hockey with, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the tie games, who you know, the one and a half, the, the puck line, all of that. And I was real good at it. But to make your bets, I mean, I don't want to watch the games. That's, that's I, I, you know, and then they're on at 7, 8 at night or whatever. I yeah. mean, you know, there's a lot of variables. That's, it's just not for me. I yeah. mean, I'll bet $20 just to yell and scream, you know, for the Super Bowl or something. But I'm not a big sports better. Yeah. All right. That was a good question, Heavy. Thank you very much. Moving on. Craps Master Journey. Joe, he is asking, is your win goal the same no matter what the game? Yeah, pretty pretty much. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think we kind of, we, we, we addressed that one earlier. That maybe, 20%. maybe Baccarat will go up higher because, 
if I'm in that streak and I'm running on the player side and there's no commission on the player and I've already won, you know, seven in a row, I mean, that's, I'm already over my goal probably. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sideshow Gamble wants to know what play strategy do you use in blackjack? All right. Well, playing blackjack, I play uh, out here in Vegas. I'm very lucky. We have a lot of single and double deck games. Uh, like, well, like I said, I only play blackjack live in the casino. I do not play that online because I am a card counter. I'm a damn good one too. So uh, I can actually count cards out here quicker than any dealer in the city can deal, whether it's just me at the table or, or it's crowded. That's not hard to do. It's real easy once you get it down. But uh, uh, so that's, I play blackjack live and uh, playing the shoe game, I do not count cards, but we do use a kind of a revised strategy that works very, very well. Okay. Moving on, Hawaii Crapshooters saw Tony's solid discipline when he rolled with the HCS at the Orleans. That's right. Made his 20% and was up and out. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And I made, uh, let's see, who who was next to me? I made it on uh, Sam's roll. Then it was, uh, I believe, I can't remember who it was then, then Eddie's roll. And then after Eddie, it went to, uh, 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 what's her, Marlene? Marlene, yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, so it was and then one more shooter. Then I think it went to Brian, actually. And then, yeah, you're right. I was gone after that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But I got Jim... to meet everybody. That's the main reason I went. Yeah, there, there you go. Jim Ronimo, he's been say, he's saying, I've been wanting to learn Baccarat. So that's a, uh, now's that's a good a time. Game. Jim. I mean, let's talk about Baccarat for a minute. It's already a 50-50 game. Okay. You just have to choose which one you want to do. Okay. You, you, you're going to, and that's it. Banker or player. It's one bet. Uh, no need for multiple bets like in roulette or craps. Streaks and Baccarat dominate. That's why you want to do it. And it's, uh, again, it, it's another game that the, the dealer or the player has no, can't influence your game whatsoever. The rules are already set. They are what they are. And yeah. uh, so you're playing against the shoe. That's it. Okay. So Baccarat, Baccarat, actually a lot of people don't know this. But my black belt Bakra, I've so that's been my top seller for the last three years over Advantage Dice Control. People don't know that, but that's a fact. Yeah. All right, Tony, I want to take a little pause here. You said you had a couple of questions that you wanted to ask the audience. We're right. getting probably okay. more. Right. We're getting more questions and All comments right. than let's I can keep up this. with. This so is, now this let's. Is, this is one for the giveaway. Here, here's the question. It's it's a two part question. If when you watch my YouTube videos on Advantage Dice Control, you'll hear me talk about the word dominant momentum. So what is dominant momentum and where would it be a benefit to you at the craps table? Two part question. So again, right, so what is dominant momentum and what's the benefit of it for you? Okay. So everybody, take a moment, uh, write down your answers here in the comments, and uh, we'll we'll get to those here in a few minutes. Meanwhile, we're going to go. Am I supposed to see them on the side here, Dave, or anything? You won't be able to see them yet. Okay. No. Uh, okay. Um, so uh, we'll flip back over. I'm going to go through some of the uh, older comments we had out there. I've, I'm telling you, but we've we've got a lot of comments coming through. Right, so good. let's uh, let's burn through some of them if we can. Uh, Stephen Pfeiffer, uh, we've already asked, uh, answered this one. What about poker as a second game? No, nope, probably not. Poker. Yeah. Larry Baker, are there any casinos where you're totally turned off to the craps tables? And if so, why? Uh, Larry, I only play 12 foot tables. I don't play 14 footers. So I'll go to the casinos that have the 12 foot tables. And if I'm going to go, you know, I'm a field player, so I will want to play somewhere where the 12 pays triple. And uh, so those are probably two of the things I look for. And and then the, the, if they have the hop layout as well. So I'm, you know, I'm pretty much accommodated out here in Vegas. Okay. Carl Peterson wants to know, Tony, do you have a preference of blackjack tables? You, you will or won't play? Yeah. Uh, uh, like I said, I uh, play uh, primarily double deck is my passion. And uh, I mean, just everybody has double deck for the most part. Okay. Dice Grinders, where are you playing online uh, for the different games? Uh, Dice Grinder, I use one online casino, and I, use, I play at betonline.ag. They're, they're, they seem to work for me. They got sports betting, if that's what you want to do as well. Uh, 
live uh, live dealers for roulette and baccarat and blackjack, so you can have a live dealer, and uh, so there you go. Yeah, one of the things um, I would also say is I I tried to do a deposit uh, on uh, that website, and I can't tell if it was they blocked my state. Or uh, they, they, they said that my credit card was not an international credit card. So uh, you may have some issues getting money in there. Uh, at least I did. So maybe, I, it's have a to... state, maybe it's a state. Because uh, I know, you know some states they allow, some states they don't. So yeah. I know for a fact, me being in Vegas, I really can't get on Bovado where everybody else uses hmm. it. So that's okay. one I can't get on. But I really don't need, for what I do, it's, it's perfect for me and... and I play the live dealers and, okay. uh, you know, the live dealers, are those the uh, dollar games also, or are they, are yeah. they higher? You play 50, 50 cent roulette live dealer. <laughs> yeah. With other players and everything. It's kind of cool. Okay. All right. Uh, flipping back over here. Larry Baker uh, is asking first question that comes to mind and not sure why, but thoughts on dice setting. Is it effective? Absolutely. It's effective. I mean, if, if you're playing craps, you need to learn how to read your dice rolls and look at your results, what you're throwing and, you know, all the right mechanics and everything. Absolutely. It's effective. I can prove it to anybody on the planet. No problem. Yeah. Next question comes from Dice Grinders again. It's a great question. Is there a specific strategy for each table game and is there multiple strategies for each? Good questions. Good questions. All right. Dave, leave that question up there, can you? So I can yeah. read that. Can you put that back up? All right, leave that there for a minute. Okay. Uh, multiple strategies, obviously, for craps and for roulette. Roulette probably has more ways to play than anything if you look at the line bets and the numbers and all that. So they have multiple strategies. Blackjack, not so much, other than the strategy you're using. And then uh, uh, craps does. Uh, roulette and baccarat do not, and blackjack probably doesn't either. But uh, there are strategies for each game, and baccarat again. Uh, I look at the trends on, on baccarat, and then you know, craps is what we do with advantage dice control. Roulette is could be played pretty similar on the the fifty fifty games on the outside bets as baccarat. I call it threesome. It's the the red black, the low high, and the odd and even. So those are 50-50 games. And if you're again, if you're playing a single zero wheel, really doesn't affect you that much. Uh, well, the only thing, the difference, in my opinion, between roulette and baccarat, the streaks are larger in baccarat. Okay, not not as, as strong in, in roulette, in my opinion. But, but with roulette, I think that there, there, there are a couple of different strategies, or I, I'm not sure what what would make them different, but you've got the threesome, uh, the, the columns, the... You know, the columns and the dozens, you have line yeah. bets, you have corner bets, you have so many, but then you're getting into, they're, they're like prop bets on at the craps table. I mean, and somebody, somebody else is spinning, you're not throwing the dice, so it's a little yeah. difficult. That's why I only do the 50-50 bets, and once in a while, the columns and the dozens, the two-to-one bets. Okay. That's about it. I don't really play just a number and try to get 35-to-1. So real quick, we've got Magic Aces out there saying he's been a student uh, since September. Best money he's spent in gambling. Thanks, Magic. Appreciate it. Then uh, Bird Dog out there asking another question. So what is the recommended bankroll for Baccarat? So when somebody asks me, Eddie, about the bankroll, look at what you want to earn, maybe. In other words, if I'm shooting for 20%, I mean, well, if that's a thousand, if my bankroll's a thousand dollars, um, I want to earn two hundred dollars, right, or thereabouts. So whatever you want to earn in a day, in an hour, whatever it might be, you know, look at your, look at what you need to obtain that, and then obviously you got to look at your bankroll and make sure you're, you know, you have the proper bankrolls for what you want to do. Yeah, and the, also the table limits. So if you're playing online, of course it's a smaller one, but if you're playing in the casino. Yeah, obviously, you yeah. have to have a bigger, bigger bankroll. All right. Next question again from Richard. Richard's uh, Richard's got a lot of questions for us. He, oh shoot, Richard, you know what? I just, I'm sorry, buddy. I just uh, actually deleted that message. He was asking uh, Put something it back like, up there, Richard. Uh, he was asking something like uh, uh, the the house advantage on the different games. So you've got baccarat, roulette, craps, and uh, uh, blackjack. Uh, I guess we're talking about the math here. Uh, is there an advantage of one game over the other? Uh, 
but yeah, Baccarat's 50-50. It's bank and player. You can call it anything you want. Peanut butter and jelly. It doesn't matter. Uh, roulette's 50-50 if you're making the bets I'm playing. Okay. Uh, other than that, uh, I'm not, a, you guys, everybody, everybody knows me out there. I'm not a math guy. Okay. I mean, it, the, I mean, take my hop system for, for a minute. Everybody says, you know, the hops are sucker bet this and that. Well, it is. I mean, if you can't throw it, I mean, people throw, you know, a dollar on the hard 10. Well, that's probably going to have somewhere around a 15, 14, 15% house edge, but we don't do that. Okay. When we play our hop system, I'm making seven bets. I have 14 ways to win. Even a random shooter should throw it every two point whatever times. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we cover it that way. And, and the way we set and toss in our landing zone, all that, we're going to, we're going <laughs> to, yeah, you have no clue how many hops we can throw. Okay. So that's, that's all I'll say on that. But did anybody answer that question, David, on I, the dominant, I, dominant I, momentum? We have so many comments coming through. Um, I haven't got to it yet, Tony. <laughs> uh, okay. We'll, we'll get there. Let's see if I can burn through some of these pretty quick. So we'll try to do some rapid fire questions and, and short answers. I'm uh, not first one. Yuri, just so you know. Super Mario says, I say barbecue at Tony Leo's house next time, the Craps Nation and Hawaii Craps Shooters. Let's go. <laughs> so next no time we're problem. all in town. It's summertime. I got the pool. You know, we'll have a good time. No problem. There we go. Richard's asking another question. Can we apply wage principles even in cruise ship casinos? Oh, man. You know... I, I, I don't cruise, so I really don't know uh, the different rules that apply to gambling or whatever. So you might want to ask some of the other guys that are up here that, that do the, all the cruises. Yeah. So the a couple of the guests that I've had on recently, uh, they've all said, that at least in craps, it's pretty much the same. Uh, so uh, your, I, would your imagine, craps I would imagine the limits would be lower. Uh, not necessarily. Maybe. Okay. But not necessarily. Uh, Larry Baker, should we stay away from $25 minimum craps tables? And what's the best table to find as far as minimum bets goes? Uh, guys, I mean, I love $25 tables. So what, what can I tell you? The, the way to win at craps is, number one, have a larger bankroll, make larger bets, and play for a shorter period of time. That's my secret right there. So you're... you're, you're, you're the money you have is your bankroll. That, that gives you the strength, the reserves, and the power to resolve. Okay, so without that bankroll, uh, you might you, you're not going to win. So, and then to you know make the make larger bets with your goal to get in and out of the casino quicker with your twenty percent or thirty percent or whatever it is you want to earn. Okay, next but, question but again. I, I, I like the bigger bets. Comes from Tony, uh, from Vince Armini again. What are your thoughts on the, and I don't know how to pronounce it. The, the Albert, okay. Uh, you, you got all of those. You got that one. You have the cancellation method. Vince, you, you know all of them. I don't do any of them. I maybe do, I do a two win parlay, uh, you know, but that's, you know, if you're, if you're using an up as you lose, you normally only need one win to get you back and in profits. If you're using a two win parlay, well, you win one bet, you parlay it, so you need two wins. So, I mean, it just depends on, I mean, obviously, a two-win parlay bankroll, you're going to need less than if you're just doing a straight up as you lose. But uh, the other ones that have been around forever and ever, I, I really don't use any of them. Okay. Tony, give me a second here. I'm going to ask you to talk about maybe a topic while I scan through some of these questions and, and get us back up to uh, uh, get us current. So I know you had two or three questions that you wanted to ask. Well, that was and, one. I want to get the answer to the one yeah, first, so, David. So let me, let me see if I can scroll back here and find where uh, those answers start to come in. Um, meanwhile, um, maybe, maybe a live Las Vegas casino report. How are things going in Las Vegas right now? Well, Vegas is back. I mean, I, I, you know, I can go midweek, you know, in the evening. It looks like a Saturday night, you know, uh, sometimes. I mean, but they're back. I mean, the weekends are crowded. Uh, what can I tell you? Half the people are wearing masks. Half the people aren't. Uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty kickback. And as long as you, uh, you know. I go midweek. I mean, I don't ever have, I don't want to deal with the crowds. I don't go no, nowhere near the strip on the weekend. 
But uh, you know, in me. some of your old videos, you talk about you, you would go maybe four o'clock or five o'clock in the morning. Is that still uh, part of your routine? Yep. When I play, I, I go early in the morning, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, uh, do my thing. And, and, it, and, and I even do that if I'm just going to go play blackjack too, because my, my rules still apply for the blackjack table. If I can get one on one with the dealer, that's, and I can do that pretty much when I'm playing craps, they're all open. Okay. I go to Red Rock, there's five tables open. It, uh, and I mean, my, my philosophy is the same. If I'm one on one with the dealer, that means I'm getting more hands dealt to me per hour, which makes me more money per hour. I'm in and out, you know, on my way. So, uh, that Baccarat really don't matter. And I'll even play stadium Baccarat where they have the live dealer where you're sitting at that video machine. I love mm. that. You go to the live table, it's a quarter, you know, a $25 table. Maybe you go to the machines with the live dealer at the stadium. You can play for five dollars over at Palace Station. Okay. So the next question comes in from Roll the Wind Craps, and before we get to the question, I just want to give uh, Ed uh, at Roll the Wind Craps uh, a, a shout out. Um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Ed and I were talking about uh, analyzing a toss, uh, and he started a new series on it where he's uh, analyzing it and uh, offering some advice. And today, he posted my video. And I would like to say very much how much I appreciate you taking the time to do that analysis and put it out there. And the recommendations that you gave me three weeks ago are starting to, to uh, uh, pay off in my practice session. So uh, if you haven't subscribed to Roll to Win Craps, go find him on YouTube. And the, the video he posted today is of my own toss. Um, and uh, uh, hopefully you'll be educated and entertained. So uh, Ed, again, thank you, brother. Appreciate it very, very much. Okay, so he's going to ask, in blackjack, do you only play two-deck toss? What's a two-deck toss? Uh, I, 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 probably two-deck shoe is probably... Uh... Do I play double-deck? When you play double-deck, they're handheld. So they're, they're being held in their hand. Single-deck and double-deck. Uh, Sometimes they have the double-deck in the shoe now. But I prefer when the dealers are holding them in their hand versus the okay. shoe. Okay. For that game. Bird Dog, again, another question. Who has been your most successful student? And I don't know oh, if you want man. to answer that. Um, well, the, uh, I have a lot of students that make a lot of money. And that's all I can tell you. I mean, all, all, all my instructors are successful. You know, Mark and Randy and Polly, they're all successful. You know, uh, Paul's been playing the most lately. I mean, he's getting ready to go to Japan, so he's, uh, you know, kind of binge playing, I guess. But he's doing a fantastic job. He knows he gets there early in the morning and he puts a chair by the crafts table and reads a book until they open up the table. OK, <laughs> who does that? He wants that position stick right. Now I showed him stick left. He would never play it. Now he swears by stick left. So but he is very disciplined. He hits his goal. He colors up. The only thing about Paul that, that, that I'm not fond of is once he hits his goal, he's ready to take everything down and color up and just walk away from the friggin' table where I tell him, look, just put money on the six and eight, let it ride. Who knows? You might roll another 20 times. Now you can build your hand up again, but, uh, they're, they're, those guys are all winners. And I got the other guys that nobody hears about that. I get emails every day that make 20 grand, you know, yeah. so it is what it is. Yeah, for those of us who, who know Polly P, um, he doesn't do it halfway, man. He is all in. No fear. It took him a while, though. I mean, the, yeah. the fear goes away when you have the confidence in what you're doing. When you have the bankroll and you have the confidence. I mean, come on. I play the six and eight every day. Everybody knows that. I got two ways to play. I play the six, eight in the field, or I'll play the four, six, eight, and ten in the, with the field. And I'll play the field independently on that particular one. But, I mean, for me to lose on the six and the eight, you think about it. I have to throw .7 out five times without throwing one, six, or eight. It's not going to happen. That's where the money management comes in, okay, yeah. my, my strictly business plan. So, basically, there's, there's, there's safe bets. And as long as you have the discipline and the bankroll and you know that you're there for a purpose and you got that predatory mindset and you're going to be a winner, you own, you own that spot at the table for 40, 50, 60 minutes. It's all yours. All that matters now is your dice rolls. That's it. 
So do what you do and do it. But the, the fear goes away when you have the confidence in what you're doing. Yeah. All right, Procraps, John over at Procraps. Tony does things one-on-one -on -one and also wage. I've seen some folks say that his coaches elsewhere in the country, how does that work? Okay, so you, you really just addressed that. Um, it's uh, Randy, um, uh, 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 Mark, and oh, My Paul. instructors? Yeah. yeah. I have three instructors now. I have a couple more other ones that I'm looking at. Uh, but uh, my instructors are promoted, you know, from within for the most part. It's not, you know, somebody else just applying for a job. I mean, I already... I already played with them, I already know them, I know what they do, you know, type of thing. Yeah. All right, let's see here. I'm still trying to get to the uh, dominant momentum answers. Uh, best tip for someone beginning to build a bankroll. Okay. All right, who is that? Craps Joe from Master Craps Master. Journey. All right, let me tell you. The thing that I, I mean, when you win money at the craps table, add it to your bankroll, okay? so. If somebody goes and they buy in for whatever two three hundred dollars and they win 200 they, they you know they'll leave and they'll go they'll stop at the home depot because they got to buy something pick up dinner for him and his wife blah 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 and then he has nothing to add to his bankroll the only way to build your bankroll is to add to it not to take your 200 hundred dollar allowance once a month and go to the craps table and play it ain't gonna happen you need to add your winnings to your bankroll and everything else needs to be separate. For example, if, if I'm shooting for 20% a day and my, uh, you know, my bankroll's a thousand, that's $200. But if I add that 200, now I got $1,200. So the next time I play, I'm looking to get 20% off of 1200. Okay. Not of a thousand anymore. So that's how you build your bankroll. That's how you get into your bigger bets. And that's how you win consistently by doing that. Or just play, 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 and then take your money and now just step up your unit. So now you're at a $15 unit, but now you have X amount of money. Now you can go to a quarter unit. Okay. Next question comes in from Heavy. He's wanting to know if you do any sector tracking at Roulette. I used to. No, I don't. Uh, I, I, like I said, Heavy, I primarily play uh, the, 50 gate, the, the outside bets, low, high, the odd even and the black or red, and then the dozens and the columns once in a t once in a while, uh, depending on what the, the the board is telling me. Okay, next question or Mid Atlantic craps. Tony mentioned team play. How safe is that from a player's standpoint? Meaning, maybe, maybe what, talk maybe talk about some of the advantages uh, uh, of team play. Okay, the advantages I mean are are great. Uh, first of all, my, the last video I did on YouTube was in regards to team play. So you might want to check it out. It was a really good video. But the advantages are, are good because, I mean, for example, let's say I'm playing with Mark or Paul or Randy or whatever, one of my guys, and I'm, I'm at stick right there at stick left. Well, if I'm using an up as you lose, and if I'm playing, let's say, my six and eight, and I have five levels, well, when I seven out, I'm going to level two on my team player. Okay? So... And, and he'll he'll hit the six or eight for me, so now I can collect, do what I do, and I'm, I'm you know back to my base bet again or whatever. So it's great in that regards to where if one of you is not doing too well, as long as you got one of the guys that's you know doing okay, or even if you're alternating, that's okay too. It doesn't matter. So uh, plus it keeps you in check. Uh, it makes everybody stay disciplined, and this, that, and the other. And sometimes we'll play with two players, or we'll play with three players. And, uh, and, and it works out. It's a, it's a great thing. I, okay, I, I encourage team play if it's the right team. Next question, Dan D. In Baccarat, is it preferable to play at a big table versus a little table? I don't really see any big tables anymore. So that uh, they used to have them over at, uh, like I said, the MGM Grand, which is now Bally's years and years ago. And uh, I can't remember the other places they had them. They had them at Caesars, I think, and whatnot. But I've not seen a big Bach table in a long time. Okay, so I still haven't caught up to uh, when you asked that question. So we're probably running about 20 minutes behind where, where I think we That's all right. we should be. I got um, two more questions too, Dave. I know, I know. But we'll we'll probably get those and, and look at those immediately rather than waiting for uh, uh, okay. for somebody to come in. Uh, Procraps, John again, wanting to know, he's heard tales 
uh, that people are doubling down on blackjacks based on the up card. Uh, so that's a, that's a tactical question around blackjack. You mean if the dealer's up card is whatever, you'll double down on your hand? So if the dealer's showing like a six up and you, you got an 11, you're going to want to double down. down. You, but you can't if you're if you're showing a black oh, doubling down on blackjacks i got it okay so that's a that's a great question pro craps and if you are a card a card counter that that's a very you, you can do that i mean i have yeah. done that okay so you can double down on a blackjack absolutely only if you know if the if the if you're ahead money if you're if you're winning money and you're in that you're in that zone where the dealer's doing everything wrong and you're doing everything right. I would do it all day long. Okay. All right, Tony. We are at the. I finally caught up. I've got our first uh, attempt at answering the dominant momentum question. So, can you refresh us real quick? What was what was the actual? The question, question is two part. Number one, what is, in regards to advantage dice control? What does the term uh, dominant momentum pertain to, and how is it used? To your benefit. Okay. So James Anthony, he comes in and says, dominant momentum is the number you're tending to roll. Then you can bet those numbers. No. Dominant moment, uh, that would be your signature number. That's the okay. number, your, your signature number, the one number that you're rolling more than the others. That is not dominant momentum in the way that I do it. So the next attempt is again from Bird Dog. Dominant momentum is when you see a particular numbers or set of numbers rolled. I need to be more specific, Eddie, on that one. Okay. Magic Aces says high or low numbers on the dice. Press All right, Magic, dominant. that's not fair because you already said you're one of my students. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then we'll... we'll, that, we'll, we'll is, that is the right answer. Put it up there, Dave, so everybody can see that again. And I'll explain it. All right. When we play, we're... Everybody, uh, the, the, we tend to look at, at two numbers, the, the number six and the number one. So the dominant momentum is the high or the low numbers. Are you throwing more numbers with a six on it or more numbers with a one on it? If you're throwing more numbers with a one on it, you're going to want to press. This is the benefit. You're four, five, and six. You would stay away or you have no need for the eight, nine, and ten. If you're six dominant, you would not press your four, five, or six. You would press your eight, nine, and ten. Six, two, six, three, six, four. Okay. So that is the benefit. So when we play, it's, I mean, that's it's so dominating to us. I mean, it just sticks out like a sore thumb. You're going to know. So, so, for example, if I'm playing my six and eight system and it comes time to do, you know, collect the press and I'm going to press, I'm not necessarily going to press the six and the eight. If I'm one dominant, I'm going to press the four, five, and six, you know, but not the, the higher numbers or yeah. vice versa. So that's the advantage to that. All right. We're going to go through some of these answers one at a time until we find somebody who's eligible to win. I, I guess I should have been more clear about that. If you're already a wage member, you're already Yeah, if you're wage, already so. a wage member, don't answer. Okay. So the next one, uh, next attempt, roll to win craps. Lower boxes versus upper boxes. Play the six or the one depending. Yeah, see, he's been watching. Way to go, roll to win. That's so, it. That's that, that that that's pretty much what Aces said. Yeah. All right, then I'm gonna I'm gonna tag that one uh, as the winner uh, of this question. We'll see. Keep going. Okay. Um, Carl Peterson saying, "What numbers you're throwing? It helps you with the hot bets." It does help you with the hot bets, but that's not what I was looking for. So, yeah, I was looking for the the, the press factor, which ones yeah. you would press on the box numbers because they're not one roll bets. Yep, trending craps. I'm sorry, pro crap says trending rolls. Dice uh, emotion says dominant momentum is the dominant number showing like a one or six, then hop those numbers. That 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 is that is one answer, but it wasn't the one I was looking for. Okay, main farmer. Best advice from Tony Leo is treat it like a business. Sorry, absolutely, I, I, that one absolutely snuck in there. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to find if we have more answers on the dominant momentum. I got another here question. Here we go. Hold that question because uh, I want to make sure that we we get to it. It means getting the same constant numbers and then hopping them. And that that is true. But again, that's not the one. I mean, you're going to see lots of times 
where, where that comes into effect on the hops. But that yeah. wasn't the, the answer I was looking for. Jim Geronimo says dominant momentum is about taking advantage of trending numbers and using that for hop bets. Everybody thought it was the hop, but the answer was to, to see your, your one or six as the dominant and press those numbers that qualify. Probably the most truthful answer out here comes from our friend Ike Isaacson. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, Ike. I mean, I appreciate you being out there and watching us tonight. Uh, Super Mario says your dominant numbers that you're rolling so you could place your bets on those numbers. That's your signature number. So that's the two triggers we use in Advantage Dice to draw. I mean, when we're throwing the dice, is our signature number and our dominant momentum. We look at both. Yep. Here we go. Joe Banda is saying it's reading your dice and seeing what your dice are doing. It's an advantage on pressing numbers and hot bets. Joe's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Okay, that, let's keep going here. Um, Craps Master Journey, is it pressing your wins uh, when you're on a good roll and knowing when to regress? No. Not quite. Not quite. Uh, Vince Armini saying domino momentum equals signature or trending numbers, giving one the ability to put on multiple areas of the tables and monopolize the power of multiple wins. Yeah, part right. But again, that wasn't the, the, the answer I was looking for was the range, low or high, and you use that to press to your advantage, the four, five, six, or the eight, nine, or 10. The hops definitely come into play, but that wasn't the answer I was looking for. All right, I'm scrolling down through here. I think we're uh, at a point where we can ask that second question now. All right, second question. Pertaining to my Super 7 hop system. For you guys that follow me, why did I name my hop system the Super 7 hop system? Okay. So, That's the so Tony, you've had a video out there on the Super Hops for quite a while now. Uh, oh, and yeah. this, so this is public, public information. Oh, yeah. Public in almost all my videos. Yeah. So, so everybody who's been watching his videos, why did he name it the Super Hop Seven System? Super, super Seven Hop System. Sorry, Super Seven Hop System. All right, let's scroll down here. I think we're going to have some questions coming in. Sorry about this, guys. I know uh, silence is not what we want to see here, but <laughs> Bird Dog, I don't know what you're talking about here, but it says he likes peanut butter. <laughs> uh, earlier, somebody was asking about table limits. James Anthony is saying cruise ship limits are typically lower. And uh, Jeff from Mid-Atlantic Craps is saying, yes, you can apply Tony's wage uh, on cruise ships. Yeah. A lot of comments about cruise ships. Oh, here's a, here's a question from Dr. Don't Pass One. What's the longest uh, roll craps by number you've ever witnessed? Uh, where and how long ago? I this one reminds me of a story you've told me. I don't know if we've shared this publicly, but uh, I think you missed a flight. Uh, you you so were in a session. Question? Well, he was asking longest longest roll of crabs. Roll. When I missed my flight, that was blackjack. Oh, okay, okay. But the 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 longest roll, I really don't know. Uh, what can I tell you? I mean, the last time I was with a group and uh, some of the guys, who was there? Craig Rogers from Washington. Polly was there. Bear was there. Uh, some of the Hawaiian guys. I mean, I, I threw 44 times at South Point on that particular roll. But that's, I mean, that, that, was, a, that was a good roll. I'm not a long roll guy. I don't, I don't base anything I do on long rolls. But... Uh, my biggest win was at the Rio years ago. It was me and a team player, and we made $45,000 in about three hours. Hmm. That was my biggest win. My biggest win at Blackjack was when I missed my plane, and I had my suitcase in my hand, and I won like 11000 in less than 10 minutes. And hmm. that's never happened again ever, but uh, yeah. that was then, you know. <laughs> 
So I'm still trying to get to the second question answers, but uh, Dice Emotion wants to know, do you ever play for fun or only for business? No, I'll, I'll play for fun if I go with my girlfriend or whatnot, that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, not, I got to say, really, not really, because I, once I go to the casino and I get home, I, I'm not into, I don't like the casinos. What can I tell you? <laughs> I don't hang out in the casinos anymore. I used to. I mean, when years ago, when I still lived in California and I was younger, I did. I mean, but uh, not really anymore. I'm scrolling down through here trying to get to the second question. Uh, Sam, Sam I am. You've played with him before in Vegas. Uh, mm -hmm. He wants to know, do you ever play the dark side? Oh, yeah, I do. When, uh, when we go play random shooters, we play the dark side. I play what's called triple threat. I've been playing that way prior to moving out here before I had my craps table. That's all I did play was random. Yeah. And, uh, and played the dome side. I played the, I don't play the dome pass and the dome com, both of them. Yeah. So one of your, uh, strategies, um, it, it's, it's absolutely one of my favorite plans to play. It's a, how to beat a random roller. I, I think there's sure. a, a different name mm -hmm. for it, but, but yeah, that has a dark side component to it. And, uh, and I've already put that video is already up on wage. Yeah. It, uh, excellent system. I, I really, really like that one. All right. We've got the first person trying to attempt the uh, super hop question. Um, so again, why did we name it? Why did you name the system? Why did I name my hop methodology, the super seven, seven hop seven. system? And Carl Peterson says seven levels, seven bets. That's only two of the answers. There's three answers, Carl. Hurry yeah. up and go back to YouTube. <laughs> Roll the wind traps. <laughs> Hop to six one five two three four. They are sevens. I think that's, Ed's that's guessing. That's part there. of the answer. Roll to win, but the, the, there's there's three answers. So Joe Banda is saying there are seven hop bets. You hop the sevens, and I believe you have seven levels. Joe Banda's a winner. There we go. Congratulations, Joe Banda's there, Joe. a winner. So let me explain that. So yeah, the super seven hop system. We make seven bets, okay, on the hops. My original hop, if you see it on the, uh, the video, is the 3 1, 4 1, 5 1, 6 1, 6 2, 6 3, and 6 4. That's the seven bets. That's the very first hop I put together. Now we have many more. But uh, you can see that the 6 1's in there too. So it's seven bets. We can win on the seven, is the correct answer. And we have seven levels if needed. So a lot of people, and there's people, uh, you know, that watch what I do and, and they don't understand the hops or they're so into the, the math or whatever, but I'm not just hopping one bet. That bet that right there is, is seven hop bets. Okay. 14 ways to win. All right. There's no house edge on that. There's 14 ways to win. That's the house edge, a random shooter should throw that every two point whatever times. We have seven levels. And I don't play that against random. That is only when I'm shooting the dice or one of my teammates, okay? Mm -hmm. We're setting our dice for those sixes and ones. And the more sixes and one, ones we have, the more hop bets we're winning. I mean, I can hop in, if I'm six dominant, I can just hop everything with a six on it. The six, one, six, two, six, three, six, four, six, five, and six, six. And then the seventh bet I normally would put on the aces or maybe another seven. Okay. Yeah. So, but that's the answer. It's seven bets, uh, seven levels, and we can win on the seven. Okay. So Joe Band is a winner there. So a couple of comments coming in or questions, um, if we can do this one quickly. Robert Delgado wants to know, Mr. Leo, what advice can you give for a team play a duo? So he's got, got two players. Robert, go watch my last YouTube video, Team Play. Everything you want is on that video. Okay, it's on YouTube. Yeah. Duracell 8, again, I like his uh, his answer here. I'm here to learn. I don't know the question, uh, the answer to the question. So, Duracell, watch, yeah, thank you for watching. My video. Yeah. 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 Um, all right, so we've got a couple more answers. So, we, we've already gone through that one. Do you want to go ahead and introduce the uh, third question? Yeah. The third question is in regards to Baccarat. And the, the, the question is, what is the main difference between, 
or l- let me rephrase that. What is the one benefit that Baccarat offers that craps, blackjack, and roulette do not? Okay, so what benefit? So the one benefit that Baccarat offers that the other three table games do not. Okay. So we're, well, we're waiting for a couple of people to try to answer this question. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, maybe some of the upcoming events? Um, uh, I think you have something coming up in May. March. I got March 26th. Uh, Ron the Don is coming out and we're doing a, tur- uh, a workshop together. He's going to work on how to win the tournaments, the craps tournaments. And then I'm going to share my advantage dice control the other half of the time. So it's going to be both of us for four hours at my home. And then uh, from there, we'll probably go to one of the casinos and play and eat dinner or whatever and uh, have a good time. And then the other one is May 14th. Uh, That's for the Advantage Dice Control students. Uh, My two instructors, Mark and Randy, will be here. Uh, Paul will be in Japan, so he won't be able to make it, but uh, it's going to be a fun time. And that'll be the same thing. We'll play and we'll, we'll, we'll do the workshop. Then we'll go play and eat and have a couple cocktails or whatnot. Okay. Uh, everything's coming out in my newsletter. My newsletters are going out this week. If you don't get my newsletters, go to my website, fill out the form, and then you'll start getting my newsletters and you can be updated on everything. And if you don't get my newsletters, uh, the last one is always up on my website. Just hit the newsletter tab and you'll see it. But uh, you should be a member because you get to see the uh, everything before everybody else does. Tony, I'm trying to remember um, your website. Is it The Gaming Pro or is it just Gaming Pro? No, thegamingpro.com. And then at the bottom of that on every page is the form to fill out for the newsletter. And then below that are my links to the YouTube video, uh, Wage, LinkedIn, whatever. I'm putting it in the chat real quick. Thegamingpro.com. Dot com. Okay. All right. So let's come back up here. Uh, we did have somebody start to try to answer the questions. Jim Geronimo was the first one to answer, the, try to answer the question. He is saying it's one bet, 50-50 win. Uh, that ain't it. Okay. On point, craps. Good answer, bet. though. Yeah. Good so answer, but, we, yeah, but yeah, no, but no, that ain't it. DJB Thunder, the tie bet, no loss on player or banker. No, that is not it either. Good answer, though. Sam I am is saying a lower house edge. That's not the answer, but that's right. <laughs> Jim's coming back with a second uh, chance. One bet of 50-50 win and can tie. <laughs> nope. Rob Down says you can bet either side of the table. That's not it. James Sargent, 50-50 edge. I think we uh, we need some lessons on Baccarat here. Uh, okay. Sideshow Gamble says true 50-50 odds. That's not, that's good answer. Those are all right, but that's not the answer I'm looking for. Uh, Duracell 8 says you can push. No. Vince Armini says 50-50, no zeros or seven to lose your bet. And they offer a tie. That's not it either, Vince, but you're on the right track. <laughs> Texas Ron wants you to book him for May 14th. He will be there. Uh, he's already, he already, I got an email from him. He's in. You're in there, Ronnie. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and skip some of these that, that we've already said didn't win. Um, let's see here. What, what is on Pint Crap saying? I don't play Baccarat, but I think John has mentioned that a few times. I'm not sure what, what John mentioned. Um, there are only two player bets, a banker or a player. That's not it. I think I'm going to have to tell everybody. Yeah, we've got a couple more people trying here. Right. Um, the dealer or the casino, uh, nor the player decides the outcome. It's all based on the shoe. Scott wins. Good Way to answer, go, Scott. Scott. Baccarat is the only game. There are no deviating probabilities that can influence the outcome of your streaks in Baccarat. Uh, no other players or the dealer. There's no effect on the game whatsoever. So all the rules are what they are. The draw rules are there. The dealer just shuffles and deals, and uh, the cards are what they are. So nobody can – it's not like having a stupid player at the craps table or the blackjack table or a dealer knowing how to spin the wheel at roulette or whatnot. There is no factor 
uh, that will that you know is against you. So it doesn't matter how many players are there. You're playing your own game. You're playing against the shoe. So that answer Scott gave was right. There, there. That's that's the answer. All right. So we've got that's Scott. That's one reason I'm attracted to Bakura for that reason and the other fact that every shoe I'm going to be on a streak of eight, nine, or ten of, of either bank or player or the chop. One of the three. Wow. Eight, nine, or ten? Oh, easy. Wow. Easy. I played this morning online. 18 banker in a row. 18 banker <laughs> in a row. I won 17 of the bets. Okay. Well, that's that's awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> and and 17 bets and you're out. That's <laughs> it. All right. So Tony, that was that was our three questions. Um I I, I have to go back to the very first one uh, that we were talking about about the dominant momentum. And uh, we had two people that kind of answered the same way uh, around the same time. It was roll to win crap. Show, show me the answers again. I'll pick one. Well, one was Joe Banda. And I think you've already said Joe was the winner for uh, the second one. But lower boxes versus upper boxes, play the six or one, depending. That, that, that would go to roll to win. It would do that. Okay. And then Scott won that's the last Ed, one. That's, that's Ed, right? Is that Ed? Yep. Yep. That's Ed. Okay. Okay. Ed, we're going to get on the phone uh, and talk about that. So give me a call or get me your number and I can call you. And Joe, too. Joe Banda, too. And then Scott Schaefer. And Scott. That's it. So that's those are our three uh, winners of those the are Wage. Three winners. Congratulations. Membership. Yeah, congratulations, guys. I, uh, I'm very excited for you. And I'll be seeing you in the uh, – uh, Facebook forum right, for Facebook the wage members. Right. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good. So, Dave, why don't you tell everybody how you like that private Facebook group? You know, I really do like it because um, it's a very small group. One of the advantages I think of the small group versus, you know, I'm going to pick on them just because I really like them. The Dice Setters Forum is that that you're you're just a close knit community. Um, it's not just the same posts that you see in every other forum. These are very specific. It's a, it's a, it's either somebody showing off a win that they just had, or more importantly, asking a question. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? And getting the feedback and feedback directly from Tony. So, uh, it's a, it's a good place to go uh, to ask the questions that uh, that you might have. And believe me, guys, I ask a lot of questions. Um, so it's, it, I, I, I think it's a great forum, Tony. I, I well, really that's, do. That's the reason that's there is for all my members to have complete clarity. So when they see a method or, you know, don't forget everybody, you see me play online as well. So mm. I log in and play online and, and you'll see that, uh, you know, just as it's happening in, in different things as well. But that Facebook private insiders group is for the benefit of the members to get complete clarity to be a professional player in whatever game they choose. Yep. Yep. So I think we're kind of winding down the show here real quick, but for the three winners out there, if you don't have Tony's contact information, get with me. I will get you guys in touch and uh, uh, we'll get you set up uh, with Tony's wage program. All right, let's do a couple of uh, housekeeping items. I, I want to show off a, a couple a calendar of events. Uh, this is something that I started to put together and I wanted to make sure that it has value with everybody. But uh, from basically here in January, from uh, the 10th of this month up until February 9th, Howard Newman's in Las Vegas offering one-on-one -on -one classes. In February, we've got a Golden Touch Craps uh, uh, workshop in Las Vegas. We also have one-on-one -on -one with Howard Newman back in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We've got the Craps Cruise 5 coming up in Florida, as well as Mardi Gras in Biloxi with the Axis Power Craps. In March, uh, Tony already mentioned Next Level Craps with Tony Leo and Ron Van Allen uh, at uh, Tony's uh, Craps Pit there in Las Vegas. And then in June, the 19th through 21st, uh, Color Up, Jeremy over at Color Up is going to be uh, hosting DiceCon, uh, something new that he's putting on and should be a fun time, a fun meetup in June. 
So we've got that coming up. If you guys have anything that you would like to add uh, to the craps calendar, uh, let me know. Drop me an email, samebet777 at gmail.com. Also, let's talk a little bit about some of the things that are coming up. Now, I, I apologize. I don't think I made it very clear that I'm trying to take this show to basically every two weeks. I need a little bit of downtime in between these shows to, to put things together. Um, so that's, that's why you don't see a weekly show uh, at this point. But coming up on January 31st, Ed, the one who just won the, uh, uh, the question there, he's going to be on the show talking about Roll to Win craps, talking about what it means to be a, a controlled shooter and, uh, uh, and how to analyze our tosses. On February 7th, Julian Romero from the Vegas Confessions podcast. The man is energetic, he's entertaining, and he's going to be a lot of fun to have here uh, on, on the show. February 21st, the Ramblin' Gambler from Casino Combat. He's going to be on the show as well. Now, I just met this guy, so uh, he's new to me. I found his podcast and started listening to him, and he also is a member of the Wage uh, Forum. So uh, that's actually how I came into contact with him. Uh, he has some principles uh, of betting and gambling uh, that he adheres to, and he also treats this like a business a little bit different than the gambling entrepreneurs, uh, but entertaining and educational uh, with no doubt. So that's our next three shows that are coming up, pretty much spaced out every two weeks, January 31st, February 7th, and February 21st. All right, Tony, before we go, I want to ask one question. Um, over your, I think, it's, I think it's your right shoulder, you have a picture. I have an addiction. It's called winning. Oh, yeah. Where did you get that? That is, that is amazing. That's awesome. Uh, that was... You know, just off of some website, I got emails or I don't remember now. I really don't know, but they have a million of them, um, different sayings and all, all related to, to business and motivation. And I can't remember the name of the company, but that's yeah. where I got it online. Awesome. Well, Tony, thanks again for coming back on the show. I hope to have Beautiful. you on again. Uh, and uh, uh I'm working on my next Vegas trip. I'm not exactly sure when that's going to be, but uh, I'll be out to see you right. as soon as Thanks I can. Thanks a lot, Dave. Thanks, everybody, for viewing, and uh, God bless you all. Take care. Right. Thanks, everybody.